חברים, כאן דביר כהן מאמזון מקליק. הסרטון הבא הוא סרטון של כ-30 דקות שלי ושל גרג מרסר, ממתי ג'אנגל סקאוט. אתם יכולים לחפש אותנו בלינקדאין, יוטיוב ופייסבוק, לסרוק את ה-QR קוד כדי להגיע לקבוצת הפייסבוק שלנו, או לגשת ישירות לדף הנחיתה. תהנו. I appreciate you staying up late for me tonight. Yeah, it's kind of late. Not too late, but, okay. you know. So. All right. So today, um, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a uh, brief demo then about some of the, uh, just general overview about using Jungle Scout and then some tips and tricks and hacks that maybe a lot of people don't know about that, you know, can give you kind of a competitive edge. Does that sound good? That sounds excellent, Greg. All right, cool. Then I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll go ahead and dive right into this. So I know it takes a second to load up, so let me know once you can see it. Okay. Okay, it's yeah. on. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, right now then I'm inside of the Jungle Scout web app. And I know this is confusing for some people. This is, uh, you know, the web-based product. This is not the extension. Um, and I'm inside of the product database. So just real quick, I'll give you kind of my workflow just in like five minutes or so about how I uh, go about uh, using the web app and more importantly, finding a good product to sell. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll select a few of the categories that I'm interested in. So let's say um, arts, crafts, and sewing. I like Uh, some of the other good ones are health and personal care, home and garden, home and kitchen, uh, home improvement, let's see, kitchen and dining. And you can, of course, adjust this um, to your liking. These are just a few of my favorite products, or excuse me, a few of my favorite categories. Um, I usually try not to sell anything less than $20. So I'm going to set a minimum price of $20. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the, the uh, product database, what this is is We've kind of re-indexed Amazon's catalog in such a way that is user-friendly for us sellers to search through. So what's cool about this is, um, you know, where Amazon's site is great for uh, consumers, for us sellers, it's hard to find good products by just using the same search criteria that uh, the, uh, the consumers do. So, you know, I set my minimum price. I personally look for something that sells about 300 units per month or more. Um, to find something that's not very competitive, I'll usually do like a maximum of 50 reviews. So this means this product's selling well, even though it doesn't have that many reviews, which is good. That means it's probably a pretty young product, uh, not a very competitive niche. I will also, uh, we can start with just these. And then another good thing, since you know we have to ship these products is the smaller the better so I usually click standard instead of oversized products okay right? mm -hmm. so we filter the database uh, within a few seconds we have all the products that meet that uh, specific criteria um, and then in here I just look straight away at the pictures and just look for uh, products that would be good uh, good type of products to private label so let's see here um, You know, this might be something, a pack three of egg dispensers. That looks pretty simple and lightweight, so I can open that. Uh, if I continue to look down here, let's see what else we have. And keep in mind, like, I didn't, uh, like, pre-select these products before this call, so I'm really, this is really how I look at them. Some of these will be good products, you know, some of them won't. Um, so the image, is, it, the image is a big factor when you are doing the search. Yeah, so all I'm looking for right now is, like, style or types of products that are good to, you know for me to private label or sell so for instance like this one a pledge uh, yeah furniture polish this isn't like a good item I don't think to sell so I would click on that whereas simple items like jars or what was the other one that I clicked um, let's see what was it it was this egg dispenser yeah. you know these are like simple items or even light bulbs are relatively simple. Um, these would be good products, you know, for me to sell. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I might just open up a few of these into a new window. Maybe I'll try to find one more. Uh, and again, like, you know, uh, an energy drink, that's probably not a very good item. 
I usually stay away from supplements, so I'm not opening any of those. Um, maybe I'll open up this product right here. It's a, a Curlic sign holder, all right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna open up these products, and now, so I know that there's w at least one of these products are selling well, right? Because I found it in the product database, but now I have to see, is this a good opportunity overall? So I'm just gonna search in the whole Amazon store, and for a, let's try egg dispenser, all right? Yeah. Once I'm here, all right, these look like they're all egg dispensers, or maybe even, I wonder if a better name for this would be egg container. Um, probably so. So we could try both. Once I'm here, that's when I usually, this is when I like to use the Jungle Scout extension, all right? And then what this does is this gives me a good overview of the entire niche or entire uh, kind of like market, right? So, you know, I know at least one of these products is selling well, but what about the market as a whole? You know, how much demand is there as a whole? How much competition is there as a whole and so on? So after I open this up, that's when I can see, you know, okay, um, what I look for is I look for something that's selling 3,000 units in total across all the products. So when I add these up, you know, I'll add up like 500 plus 350 uh, plus 170 plus 1200. If these in total equal about 3,000, then that's my personal rule of thumb for seeing that there's enough demand for me being interested to sell in it, all right? Okay. Of course, that, that could change a little bit. However, that's personally what I use. And then over here, I look at reviews to see how competitive it is. So I like to see at least one person in the top five with under 50 reviews. And in the top 10, I like to look for something with like four or five people with under um, 50 reviews. So let's see, you know, this guy has one in the top 10 with, or in the top five with under 50. However, in the top 10, uh, there's only like three. So for me personally, this is like almost borderline, but it's probably a little too competitive. I think I could find something better. Okay. So then if I, yeah. if I go on to this next product, and hopefully you're following with me here. I'm, I'm doing this uh, kind of quickly. Yeah, it's but, okay. Great. All right, great. So I'm going to do uh, mini glass jars. It looks like that's what these are. And again, I'm going to run Jungle Scout here. So remember, the purpose of this is I know there's one product that's selling well. However, in the entire niche, you know, how well are all the products selling kind of uh, in total? So remember, I like to add up to make sure that there's at least 3,000 sales total. And this is this e easily meets that one, right? Like 5,000. Okay, yeah. It beats it off the first one. But if I were to add up the second and third, you know, this is total like 8,000 or something, which is a lot of demand. So then I look at the number of reviews. Remember, I like to see like one person with under 50 in the top five. So let's see, this is the top five. I see two people with under 50, so that's good. Uh, the top 10, remember I like to see like four or five people with under 50 reviews. Let's see, we have one, two, three, uh, four, yeah, almost yeah. four. Yeah, so this is something that um, may be a good opportunity, right? There's tons of demand, yet it's not like really competitive. I'm not seeing a whole bunch of sellers with like 500 or 1,000, you know? There's a lot of guys that are like pretty young that fit in here. Um, so this right here, you know, more than likely is a pretty good opportunity. I could, I could probably, you know, sell something like this guy for 30 bucks, uh, 24 of these little jars, or let's see, this guy, um, again, it looks like it's about a 24 pack, you know, for almost $30, which is a good price point. And, you know, these guys up here, this guy only has 42 reviews and he's selling about 800 a month, which, um, that's really good. Yeah. So, you know, this right here would be a pretty good opportunity. Don't you take into account if it's an Amazon or a, the number of FBA private sellers? Um, yeah, I actually, I am not scared uh, against selling against Amazon. So as in what we're talking about here, like this uh, seller, top sellers, Amazon, yeah. this third one's Amazon, uh, the fifth one here's Amazon. I haven't seen anything to lead me to believe that Amazon ranks their own products better than the FBA products, okay? 
Uh, the other good thing about competing against Amazon listings mm-hmm. is they don't do pay per click, so there's no sponsored ads. That gives you know like us an upper hand advantage. Uh, they don't do promotions or giveaways to get more reviews. Again, that gives us another advantage and so on. So yeah. um, to me personally, it actually doesn't really matter if it's an Amazon seller or FBA seller. I, I'm willing to compete against either of those. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can just look at this last one real quick just um, so you guys kind of understand how I do my product research. So again, I'm going to search for like the main keyword or – the product type i'm going to search for it on amazon and the next thing i do is run and again a lot of you guys i think already know this but this is the jungle scout extension yeah which is different than the web app and i kind of forget that sometimes it's hard for you guys to see so let me zoom in that's too much um so again i think you guys understand this by now but i I look for about 3,000 units total, so it's about like 1,200 plus about 500. Uh, if I were to add these up by the time I got to here, I think this would be about 3,000, so it checks that box. Remember, the next thing I look for is the number of reviews. Yeah. Um, in the top five, it looks like there's three people with under 50, and in the top 10, there's lots of people under 50, so this isn't a very competitive niche. This is something that, um, if I were to order these, I could do a giveaway of like say 30 units and right away I'd be ranked up here in these top 10 spots probably. So that's a good sign. Um, So again, this is the type of product that I'd be willing to sell. You know, there's plenty of demand. Um, It's pretty simple product. This could easily be manufactured in China and it's something that I could easily compete on. So this is the type of product that I like. Um, The last step before, so again, we're still like, this is my, typical general product research uh after we go over it, i'll give you a few little like tips or hacks but the last step that i do before i actually order like place an order from a factory yeah. is i'll track some of these products so i'd go in here to like say for instance if i did want to order these egg containers i'd put a few of these products into the product tracker i'd add them um and i'd add say like the top five or top ten people selling these I would track these on a daily basis to make sure this seller didn't do like a giveaway or something mm-hmm. that um, to me, that's like a red flag that like, okay, are they really selling that many or are they, or is it just in a promotion right now? So, you know, I could add a few more of these to the product tracker and that's something that that's good, you know, to monitor and make sure they're actually selling how much, you know, as much as what you expect. Yeah. So I know that. I, so I know. Sorry. So I know that there isn't any kind of a blast promotion that pick this product up. That's exactly right. Yeah. So you know, like for this one, there's no uh, data yet, but uh, we'll start tracking it today, so you can check back in a few days and make sure that you know there's yeah. no type of promotion going on. So yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I do like my product research on a day to day basis. But let me. So you know, those those are all really good steps. Those work. Uh, that, that's literally what I do. That's how I found new products to launch. But let me give you some other like little tips or hacks that like a lot of people don't use. Okay. Um, another cool thing you can do. So again, I'm back in the product database, which is inside the web app. What another thing I'll do is I'll say, okay, show me all the products that are selling at least 300 a month yet don't get very good reviews. So I'll do like a maximum of three and a half out of five stars. All right, or you could even do three if you wanted. And um, what you'll find here is like, so all these products, that means that they're selling well. And let me even sort by estimated sales. These products are selling well, even though they don't get very good reviews. Um, so what you can do is you can then look into some of these and figure out, okay, like, why are they getting bad reviews? Like, this is crazy. This. This is an olive oil sprayer. Mm-hmm. It sells like 5,000 a month, yet its average review ratings 3.2 stars. Amazing. Yeah. So, you know, this, this one's a little uh, price kind of inexpensive for me. But what you can do is then you can le- read the reviews. I click on all the one-star reviews and figure out like, okay, why is, it, why is this getting bad reviews? And sometimes it's something really simple that would be easy for you to fix. 
And then other times it's like, well, maybe it's just a bad design, like in general, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this one looks like the interior is plastic, uh, you know, broke after a couple months, after three months. Um, it looks like maybe like the plastic part on it breaks easily. Just can look at this for one second. But so you might be able to talk to a factory and say, you know, hey, could you replace this uh, top plastic lid and top plastic spray or, you know, cap with something metal that's more durable, right? Because yeah. it's obvious that people really want this. They're buying it like crazy, even though it gets really bad reviews. Yeah. Um, so if you could make one that got all five-star reviews, you could probably then all of a sudden charge like 15 or $20 for it and still sell it really well. So this is something that takes a little bit more work, but it's a really good like long-term plan, you know, because you're, you know, legitimately uh, creating a better product that, um, you know, like people are really going to like and so forth. Um, so we can look at one other one. So this one, again, it sells like crazy, 4,000 a month, yet it has three and a half stars. So let's just see what people don't like about it. Just click the one star reviews. Let's see. Uh, it looks like it's too small, wrong size. Overpriced, uh, worthless, yeah. Yeah, started to crack and fall off. Um, hmm. So it feels it seems like there's a few improvements you can make. One would just be like accurately advertising how big they really are. So maybe you'd show it next to a, a, you know, like a measuring tape giving the actual dimensions because it looks like they're misstating that. Yeah. Um, another thing you could do is, let's see, they don't actually fit on all size legs. Anyway, this is, you know, it, it takes a little bit longer because you have to read through these reviews, but you can find out like, okay, why isn't this product good and how could I improve on it? Because uh, it's obvious that people really want to like this product because uh, they're buying it even though it gets really bad reviews, you know? So. Yeah. That's, that's a good little tip or hack that not many people use. Um, one other really good one I want to share with you. This time I'm going to put in a minimum price. Let's say $20. Uh, $20. So down here, the listing quality, what we've done is we've gr graded all of the listings in our database on, you know, like how many pictures they have, how good the title is, uh, how many bullet points they have, and all these important factors that make a good listing. So the idea here is like, let's find products that have a really bad listing yet are still selling well. And we because can, and, and the idea behind us that we can make a better list. That's exactly right. So, you know, right away I see some coffee mugs here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're selling 380 a month, yet it doesn't seem like there's a very good listing. So let's take a look at the listing. Sorry, I have a whole bunch of windows open now. Let me close out some of these. Mm -hmm. uh, so the listing, this one, you know, isn't terrible, but it could be improved on. Uh, you know, a pretty short title. Uh, it does have five bullet points. However, uh, they could be a little bit longer. Um, the product description down here, it's only like three sentences long. So that that's not great, right? Yeah. But I bet we can we can find one that's worse. So let's actually do a maximum of 20. Let me filter this again. And then you'll find some of these are really bad. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at this one. So you kind of have to look through some of these, but, you know, like this one is product description. is <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, like the... Amazing. Yeah, one line. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it has a really short title that doesn't even really tell me much, right? Like all I really understand is it's a mini heat gun. Um, this should all be taken away and it should say like um, mini heat gun, uh, blow dryers, two settings, quiet, all these kinds of things, you know, instead of just like this, so that's pretty bad. Um, again, this one actually does have, you know, five photos that aren't that bad. So this one can mainly be improved in the title, uh, bullet points, and so on. Um, so what you can do is you can kind of look through these, though, and, you know, figure out, 
okay, why do they have a good or um, looks like this guy added them after the fact. You know, you can look through these and say, okay, what's wrong with this listing? How could I improve on it? And then you could probably sell the exact same item just with a good listing and it would sell way better, right? Yeah. So like this product, um, Amazon actually does this. So this product doesn't have a description. Yeah, there's no description here. Um, the title's not very good. It only has one picture, and it doesn't have any bullet points. Any re so this, zero reviews. Yeah, it even has zero reviews. And mm -hmm. let's see. How it's many? No, how many selling in a month? It's number six. Okay. It's number six in all of automotive, which means that this thing sells like crazy. Watch this. Didn't pull that in, but let me show you how many of this is selling. It's nuts. Number six in all of automotive. Say, Greg, how is accurate Jungle Scout? Yes, yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, so look at that. So number six in automotive is 2600 a month. And this thing's terrible. This is a terrible listing. If you just <laughs> sold this exact same product with a good listing, like, I don't know how many you'd sell, but it'd be a ton. Yeah. Uh, so it's a good question. So... Uh, as a lot of you guys probably know, let me pull up something to show you here. Um, you know, Amazon doesn't give, uh, they don't release how many units each product sells. That's something that we have to uh, come up with ourselves. Okay. Um, uh, so what we do is we follow about, uh, it's about a hundred thousand products now on a daily basis and we monitor their sales rank and uh, sales for that day. So we create a relationship, a regression analysis um, between the best sellers rank, the BSR, in the parent category mm -hmm. and how many sales that unit's making. Uh, we have a data scientist who's super smart who then comes up with a graph like this and we update this the first week of each month. And what we do is then we say, okay, like a sales rank of 3,000 sells between... Um, you know, some of these products might sell like 200 a month. This, some of these products up here might sell like 250 a month. So we take the average of that. That's what this red line represents. And that's how we come up with the, uh, the estimated sales per month. So, um, it's never going to be perfect, you know, just because Amazon doesn't release this and, you know, a product with the exact same, uh, sales rank might sell a little bit different. However, it's plenty close enough. So for instance, you know, there, uh, right here, we estimate this product sells 2,619 a month. In reality, it probably sells between like 2,500 and 2,700, right? Yeah. So it's close enough that we know, um, you know, about how many it's selling, like for, to do product research or forecasting, it's close enough, but it's, you know, this product might really sell 2,625 instead of 19, you know, like yeah. it, it's not that accurate. Um, but it can give, it gives you a really good idea. Um, you know, well, good enough so you can do good product research. Yeah, it's a good estimation so me to able to determine if I go on it or not as a yeah, seller. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise you can't, you don't really know whether it's, <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you'd be like, okay, was well, this product selling a hundred a month or a thousand a month? You know, it's like that's a big difference. Um, so, our, you know, using our estimations, you can get the good estimations. Um, yeah, so those are those are two things that I think, you know, if all uh, if everyone watching this went out there and they found a bunch of products using that uh, maximum rating trick I showed you, mm -hmm. so you know, like three and a half stars or three yeah. stars or the listing quality, I think those are two areas that not many people know about it or take advantage of it. And there's so many good products under there. You just have to look. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah, that's, that's what I'd recommend everyone to do. Cause, um, I think as like you guys know, product research is so important, uh, you know, for doing well on Amazon, it, it really like makes, you know, makes it or breaks it or makes your life really easy or difficult doing yeah. proper product research. So that's what I'd recommend. Yeah. Okay.
do you see any kind of change in you know the Amazon toss Amazon is throwing into the air all kind of rules you know reviews are uh, changing and how does it affect uh, the our our the seller using the jungle scout uh, yeah Amazon hasn't really made any like rules or changes kind of a uh, affecting jungle scout yet um, you know like overall I think uh, Amazon is getting more competitive right there's more sellers coming on there however you You know like our product research tools are ways to like find new products you're getting more advanced so it lets us kind of stay a step ahead of the curve right yeah so like without uh, a tool to like help you find a product now it'd be really hard you know like just think about the products we found with it it was like an egg container like I didn't even know those existed um, hexagon glass jars again like I've never seen those before yeah um, so these are products you wouldn't normally think of without it so like without you A helpful tool it's really tough to think of these products and you know come up with things that are gonna sell well so um, Amazon's still a, an excellent opportunity like I'm still releasing new products myself uh, I know a lot of people are having a lot of success with it it's just you just have to do a little more work on the front end about you know to find a good product okay what is the the next generation of Django Scout what uh, are you what are you planning what are your surprises good question Uh, let me see if I can uh, pull something up really quickly here okay so sure. um, we, we are going to see something as yeah, a so better this, users uh, here I'm gonna share my screen again with you okay um, so this is the next feature that we're releasing with jungle Scout um, can you see it now yeah okay cool so this right here we're calling it the niche hunter mm-hmm. so as the product database is we're searching for certain products that are doing well and then we analyze the entire niche on amazon.com mm-hmm. uh, what the niche hunter does is instead you can say okay let me look at the demand for an entire like keyword or niche so I might say like I only want things that um, the average product selling more than let's say like 400 a month and I want something that's not too competitive so a competitive score six or less okay. Um, and then let me also say okay I want the average price to be like twenty dollars and I'll also say like keyword length I want to be one or two so what I have here these are a whole bunch of keywords or actually like niches Whoa. that are um, doing well so then I might say like okay yeti koozie it looks like and you can scroll through and this is how many uh, sales each of the top 10 products are making um, which you know some of them, The one's made by Yeti, which is a brand. Uh, this one's doing really well, 5,000 units, uh, 3,000, and so on. And you can also look at the number of reviews. So instead of having to leave uh, Jungle Scout to go to Amazon, you can look at a lot of this stuff right in here and come up, again, with um, product ideas or niches without, you know, with, uh, without leaving Jungle Scout. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's a lot of stuff I wouldn't normally come up with. like um, trimming machine you know this looks like some kind of beauty product that uh, yeah I don't, it looks like I guess to shave your hair hmm. amazing um, where, where is the uh, what is time is going to be on production yeah so we've actually we on Friday so let's see this is a Monday on Friday so a few days ago we released it to to um, Our users on the 99 dollar a month plan or mm-hmm. more they're they're kind of like our beta users okay and then um, if depending on if they find any problems or not we're gonna release it to some of our or a lot of our other users this week so you can expect to see I don't know when you're gonna release this video but they can expect to see it pretty soon mm-hmm. okay yeah well amazing amazing feature thank you yeah, yeah we're ma- really excited about it. I think it's really gonna you know like take it to the next level yeah Yeah, amazing. Okay, Greg, is there anything you want to say to the Israeli viewers? One uh, is that I plan on coming to visit Israel this summer, so I hope to see a lot of you guys. <laughs> okay. And two, um, like I was saying like earlier, uh, selling on Amazon really is like a great opportunity right now. So 
you know, like if you're just looking to get into it or like looking for that first product, um, I definitely recommend it. I'd say like, you know, don't get hung up on, uh, I think a lot of people like hit little like bumps along the road or like stumbling blocks. You know, yeah. maybe, like they find a bad fact, their first experience is like a bad factor or something. Uh, my advice to you is just like keep pushing ahead and it'll, I think it will definitely be worth it. It'll pay off. Yeah. Okay. So, right. okay. Greg, shalom from Israel. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was an honor to speak with you. I really appreciate it. Say, say my regards to Elizabeth, of course. Absolutely, will do. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Bye-bye.